Hey, what's happening guys? In this video, I wanna take a look at your closure solutions to the advent of code problems. So let's get started. I'm cool again. So this is a follow-up video to my previous video where I covered a closure solution to this advent of code problem, but the solutions I saw online were actually a lot nicer. So I wanna cover three of those. I'm gonna cover the problem now, but everything is linked in the description below. So if you wanna get a better sense of what the problem actually is. Basically what we need to do is we need to loop over this input data and we need to check if the following number from our current number is less than the next number, then we need to increase the counter. So if 127 is less than 147, then we need to increase the counter. And that's part one of the problem. Part two of the problem is we need to check if the total of these three numbers is less than the total of these three numbers then we need to increase our counter. So let's check some of your guys' solutions. Before we start, I have a REPL running. I've got some test input, which is just the first few numbers of our input. And then I have the entire input. That's this file, and I've just converted it to a vector of integers. So the answer for part one is gonna be 1602, and the answer for part two is gonna be 1633 with my input. So the first solution I wanna look at is from Eric who posted it on my previous video. So thanks for that. And this is his solution to part two. So if we just evaluate this and run part two with the input, cool, we get the right answer. So let's just break down his solution a bit more. So I can see, off, I can see straight away that this actually can be used for part one as well. So let's just duplicate this, get rid of these two lines. Now let's make it part one. And if we evaluate this here and run part one with our input, we get 1602. So let's just take a look at what's happening here. I'm just gonna grab, the, take these lines out. So this partition function is like really handy for the solution. Let me show you what it does. So if we run partition on a vector of, I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we partition it with the value of two, we're gonna get, we're gonna get a list of three lists, each containing two elements. But what we can also do is we can pass through a step here. And what this will do, it'll then use the next number to make the next partition. So we can see we have one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six. That's already very handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this out for our test input. And now we can see these values. Then what Eric does is he actually maps over the result of this. So he puts this inside of a map. And then he runs an apply function with the less than function. So basically what he's doing is he's getting a function and he's getting the vector here. So if we print line V, we'll see he's getting each of these vectors. And then he's applying on those vectors the less than function. So if we go apply with less than and we'll have those two values, which is one, two, seven, and one, four, seven. It'll return true because what it's doing is it's running this function like this. That's what apply does. So I'm just gonna copy this out here. And if we evaluate this, we can see we're getting a list back of true and false values. Then he runs filter identity. So what filter identity does, if we run filter identity, with a vector and let's just pass through one, two, zero, false, null, true. And evaluate this. Identity is a function that returns itself. So if we run identity with 10, we'll get back 10. So by filtering with identity, essentially what we're doing is we're filtering out non-truthy values. So false and null are falsey values. So we only get back values which are truthy. So what filter will allow us to do on this list is get back only the true results. And the true results are the ones where 127 is less than 147 and where 147 is less than 148. So the ones that we need to count. So let's actually just run filter identity on this vector. So we go filter identity. And you see we only have true values. So if we count the total of all of these, that's how many times the next number is greater than the previous number. And that's exactly what this is doing. Cool, so that's how that works. Part two, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this here. Part two works very similarly to part one, except he's running this partition and this map before. So he's increasing the size of the partition. So if you go partition three, one, and our test input, 
you'll see that now we're getting lists of three values each. And then he's adding up those values using the map and apply function. He's basically going mapping over this and then getting a function where we have the list and then running apply plus on each of those lists. So this value would be one, two, seven, one, four, seven, one, four, eight, for example. And if we run the here, we can see that we're getting those added up. And then after running this, he's basically running part one again and counting the results. So that's a really cool solution. Thank you for posting that, Eric. The next solution I wanna cover is one that was posted on the Clojurian Slack channel and the guy posted it on GitHub. So the link to this is in the description. Thanks for posting this, by the way. This first, this pass longs is basically passing the input file. So I'm not gonna use that, but I'm gonna copy this and let's go over what this does. So let's paste this here. And this pass longs function we don't need because our input is already passed. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. And let's evaluate all of this. And then let's check out. So part one, let's run that with our input. That works. And let's check part two with our input. That works also. Cool. So let's check how we did it. So for the functions, the part one function, we're calling partial on solution with the value two. So what that's going to do is it's going to return us a new function where this window value is already assigned to the value two. So it's the same as calling if we call solution to and then our input, which we can go to input here. It's the same as converting this part into part one. That's what the partial is doing, giving us a partial function. So let's check out how the solution is working. So we're passing through our input to this increasing windows function with the window value. So this would look like this, our window would then be two, and then we're passing through our input here. And that's giving us a list of lists. Let's check out our REPL. Yeah, it's giving us a list of lists. In each of these lists, the first value is lower than the second value. So let's check out how that's happening. Cool, so he's running partition again, and then he's running filter on the partition. And then that filter is returning us the list back if the first value in the list is lower than the last value. So let's just see how that would look. So we'll run partition and the window would be two and our numbers, I'm gonna use test input. So then we have a list of lists. Then he's running filter on this list and let's just use an anonymous function. Then what he's doing is he's getting back the list here. So these are gonna be our vectors. So this value would look like, for the first result, it would look like one, two, seven, one, four, seven. And he's grabbing the first value, so the first, of the value and then the last of the value, so last V, that will give us the last item in the list, which in this case would be one, four, seven. And then he's running this less than on it. And that will filter out all lists where the first value is higher than the second value. And once we've done that, we can just count all the values in that list and that will give us our answer. And what happens when we increase this window to size four is that these partitions get increased to four. So we can run partition four step one on our test input. And then what we're doing is we're just checking to see if one to seven is less than one four seven. And that provides us with the answer of one six three three. Cool, that was also a really nice solution. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And the last solution that I wanna show you is, I think it's my favorite solution that I've seen, is on my video, if we go to Alexander's solution. It's so succinct. It's really cool. If we evaluate this, so this is the answer for part two. If we go part two and pass through the input, we can see we get the right result. But if we change this drop three to drop one, and we hit part one, we'll actually get the answer for part one also, one six zero two. So let's take a look at how this is working. He's also running count on filter, and he's filtering out only positive values, and here, this map looks like where all the interesting stuff is happening. So let's take a look at map. We know how map works. We get map, map takes in a function which takes in a value and the value that gets returned gets added to our new list of items. So if we go map over one, two, three and evaluate this, then we get a list back with one, two, three. Then if we run plus VV, we'll get all the values in our map doubled. So that's pretty cool. 
But what we can also do with map is we can pass through another vector. Let's pass through two, three, four. Now what we have is we actually have another argument passed through to this function. So we can say v2 and we can go plus v and v2. And now we can see that one plus two is three, two plus three is five and three plus four is seven. And we actually don't need this function now. We can replace it with plus and it'll know what to do. We get the same result. So he's passing through our test input here. And then he's passing through the value of drop one input. And then this is a minus. So well, this will be test input. So what drop one test input does is it will drop the first value. So we looping over essentially this vector here, it would look like this. And then we're minusing the value of the vector that starts with one to seven. So if we run this, we get 147 minus 127 is 20. 148 minus 147 is 1. 147 minus 148 is negative 1, and so on. Then what he's doing after that is he's filtering out the positive values. If we go filter, it takes a predicate function, which is, in this case, is pos. And that just determines if a number is positive. So if we go pos negative 1, that's going to be false. And pos 1, that's going to be true. And pos 0. That's going to be false. So once we filtered out all the positive values, we know how many times the second number is greater than the first number because that would be a positive ad that would be a positive value. And that's how we get the first answer by counting those values. The second one is also really interesting. So for part two, what he does is he increases this drop to three. What that essentially does is it just starts the next map on. So if we go drop three test input. It just starts the next vector on 147. So then we'll have 147 minus 127. Let's actually just do this here. This here, and we'll use our test input. And you'll see we have 147 minus 127 is 20. 146 minus 147 is 1. 153 minus 148 is 5. Then we filter out the positive values there and we count how many of those there are. And that's that solution. So I really like this solution. I think it's really cool. Cool, I really love doing problems like this. I think it's a great way to learn new functions and see how people solve problems. I hope you guys enjoyed this follow up and catch you in the next video. Cheers.